Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Fiercely Spiritual Podcast. I'm Sandra Ray and I'm delighted to be here today with Julie Parker. Julie is a healer, a visionary and a writer and Julie's a soul writer at heart and soul matters, a transformational coach, an energy healer, a Reiki practitioner and a Pelua healing technique trainer. So I am really excited to talk to Julie today. She has such an interesting background and I just love about this new energy, the Pelua healing or Pelua healing, I think it is, that she will be talking about. So Julie, you're so welcome and I'm so excited to talk about this today. Thanks, Sandra, and thanks so much for having me on Fiercely Spiritual. I'm excited to be here. Yes, and I wanted to talk a little bit about your journey because it's such an interesting story about how you came to do this work and your background. And I'd love to get into that a little bit just to explain to people just your story and how this all came about. Sure. So um, I think everybody can tell by my accent that I'm Australian. Um, and I was, I was born in Australia but raised in Papua New Guinea. My uh, parents took the decision um, when we were very, my brother, sister and I were very, very young to, um, to move there for my father's work. And um, that was probably my earliest recollections of being in an environment where people saw difference and saw separation. And I have some really strong um, memories of um, a lot of the, the tribal ceremonies and things. And we were very fortunate as children, we were very fortunate to be invited to things that wouldn't normally um, have, we wouldn't normally have received an invitation to. So strong memories of that, strong memories of the um, unity and the singing and the, the, the healing, because of course it was all alternative healing in, in the tribes. Um, and my mum is, uh, was very, and still is very interested in theology. She studied theology and um, she's a theosophist. So we grew up with um, an understanding from a spiritual perspective. And uh, she was also interested and still interested in all things complementary and with, um, you know, clean and healthy living. And my father, on the other hand, is incredibly entrepreneurial and very business um, focused and, and orientated. So it was kind of like the perfect combination with the two sides of, of spirit and, and business working together. Um, so great background to come into then walking a spiritual path, but also um, I ended up in a corporate um, career, which was um, probably something that was expected at the time. But I first started working in public relations and then in advertising and marketing. So when I looked, looked back on it, they were all things that were about the psychology of humanity and the way that we, we actually operate and what causes us to take the actions that mm. we do. And um, in my latter years in the corporate environment, I worked as a coach. Um, in uh, corporate environments, mainly with organisations, small and medium-sized businesses, whose um, owners had actually woken up and were experiencing spiritual awakening and were walking that path and were actually finding that their business was misaligned, their business environment was misaligned with their spiritual understanding. And so I would go in and um, assist in the facilitation of the culture change within those businesses, both from the physical and the non-physical environments to bring them more in alignment with the new ways of being for their owners. Wow, that's really interesting. And it's amazing to think that those people were open to that. Um, especially, I know more and more people are becoming open to it now and it's like people are running their businesses that way from the start but I imagine that was a few years ago where in the 90s. okay in the 90s, so and it was over I was actually over here in the UK I was based in the UK at the time and um, yes it was a very very new frontier I think there were only about three of us who were actually working in that kind of way and um, I was very fortunate to fall into that. I was actually approached by a business owner who basically said, this is what I need, can you do it? And I said, I don't know, I've never done it before, but I have this understanding and I have that understanding. So 
if you're prepared, prepared to take a risk, let's see if we can work together to, to um, achieve the result. And so, yeah, very, very fortunate to have the trust of those that I worked with, yeah. And great that you have both sides of it, that you can marry them together. And I have a similar background because I worked in marketing and PR and event management. So very similar kind of understanding of that way people think and getting into the you know consumer patterns and behavior. But I think when I left that environment, I kind of had a bad taste in my mouth in that it was like people, the companies I was working with were pushing their products and selling for the sake of it rather than selling things that people needed. Mm -hmm. And it was like, let's just increase sales. Let's get those things out there. And it wasn't about, well, what do people need? How can we help people? So I kind of came away from it thinking, well, marketing isn't necessarily a good thing. Now I have a different understanding because in order to reach people, we need to be able to share our message. And that's, that's right. what it's about. Yeah. Exactly so. right. And providing we get our, our messages in alignment and congruent, then, you know, we attract those that resonate to, to that message. And, and I'm, I'm so grateful for that background in marketing, for the business background. Um, because, I mean, I never think that anything's wasted. So I think anything we do comes to, to fruition in the final thing that we're actually here to present, you know, or gift um, to the world. And so every little piece, although it seems incongruent at the time, somehow brings it, it all into alignment and congruency. Absolutely. I was just talking to my husband about this yesterday and saying how, you know, people think, oh, I have to find my life purpose or I have to, you know, get it right. And it's not about getting it right. It's about the journey and the discovery and doing all the little things along the way. And absolutely my career in marketing helped me so much when it came to setting up my website and communicating with people and all the stuff that I already knew I could apply to the business. And yeah, it, I think we don't appreciate those little, what we think are meanders are actually helping us along the way. Absolutely. And I, I, I don't think there's any missteps. I think all the steps we take are important steps and, and we just have to follow them until the next step actually appears and and i wish that we were actually taught that from a young age because it would make life um far more uh, it would make life far more of an adventure for us but it would also be easier for us to understand that we don't need to know what it's leading to and it's not a permanent thing it's just where we are right now it's what we're doing right now so yeah but yeah, yeah very grateful for all the steps i've taken along the way to get here and so you discovered Reiki healing and then when did the Pelo healing come along? Okay, so while I was over here in the, in the UK in the 80s and the 90s, um, which is, um, I, I first studied Reiki over here in the 80s and the late 80s. Um, I also studied um, aura healing, crystal healing, colour therapy, massage, and yes, attuned to Reiki. So those, all those things I did alongside the corporate um, uh, side of things and continued to whatever came to me that, that I felt pulled to or an interest in, I continued to study them. I didn't always understand why or how they were going to be used. Um, but eventually, last only as, as recent as last year, um, this word Pelua kept popping up in different places and I have this this thing that I was that was shared to me by my guides probably when I was in my 20s that was if something crops up three times take notice take significant notice and that's what happened with Pelua the name actually popped up within a, um, a week three three times and I thought okay I, there's something in that I need to look at that and so I investigated it and I found that there were several teachers uh, close by to me um, and when I initially looked there was a teacher and I was like okay no it's definitely Pelawa but it's not that teacher and I ended up working with a teacher called Anne Sheree um, and she had worked directly with the lady Kachina Mann who had actually channeled Pelawa. So uh, Kachina channeled Palawa in 2003 and she was instructed in 2004 to start attuning people to it. And she had been working with a very small group 
of uh, people who, with spiritual development and they were the first ones that she trained and Insha was one of those original ones that she trained. So I was obviously directed there for a very specific reason and I attuned to level one and two in June of last year. Um, and started immediately practicing it. It felt like home to me. It felt it felt like it was just perfect timing in in every way. Um, uh, it felt so familiar. Um, everything about it felt familiar. And my life literally changed within a six month period. So I went from being afraid to do things to basically saying, okay, well, yeah, um, there's a little bit of fear there, but I'm going to do it anyway. So it was a big, a big, big shift. And then in February of this year, I took the teacher training with Kachina because Kachina these days only teaches um, the teacher training. Um, and um, pretty much from, from February till now, everything's changed. So I'm, I'm now back in the UK. <laughs> Well, I want to get into this a bit more with you. And first of all, I'm going to come back to it because it's really interesting. But I want to go back a little bit to when I first came to know you, which was a few years ago through Heart and Soul Matters on Facebook. And it's funny because I've seen how since then, like when I first discovered you and Heart and Soul Matters, it is like you're coming to the forefront more. It was your message that was prominent, but now it's like you're revealing yourself and you're coming to the forefront more in being the visionary of that behind that message. Yes. Um, and I love that because I think so often, well, I can see from the messages and from the posts and from the inspirational um poetry is what I can describe it as um, you have such a high vibration it's such a connection but it's interesting to hear that you know there was still that bit of fear and there was still that like you know step that you needed to take to just step into yourself a bit more so when did you start up Heart and Soul Matters? Yeah I think Heart and Soul Matters was around um 2012 or 2013, I can't quite remember exactly when. I know it had been in gestation for a while <laughs> before I actually um, stepped into it. Um, and the reason I stepped into it, I mean, I had registered a trading name, I had purchased the domain, um, but had not set up a Facebook page. And then I felt this incredible force that I had to do it. So fear kind of was uh, you know dissipated in the face of the force that actually moved me to to do it. And originally, when I set up Heart and Soul Matters as a Facebook page, um, I did not sign my name to the poetry or the, or, or the writing. And you know, I think it's really important that people understand that we, you know, we 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 are here as healers, as visionaries, as writers, as teachers. But we also have our own journey to overcoming our own fears and our own blocks and our own patterns and so what might appear easy on the surface has taken quite a bit to actually get us there so it has been an evolutionary process and I am incredibly grateful to the community that I have at Heart and Soul Matters because they are the ones who really gave me the strength and the courage to step forward and actually start using my authentic voice um, mm. and, and bringing forward the things that flow through me because I, that's the only way I can describe it. They actually flow through me. It's not something I sit down and think about. It's, it, it's just something that comes forward. And sometimes it comes forward when I'm driving or, you know, um, in the middle of, of, of a conversation, thing, things just, just flow forward. So, um, yeah. yes, yeah, so quite a journey to get there. Um, I had no idea at the time what it was for or where it was leading to or how it was going to be utilised. So it was one of those ones, just take a step and see what happens. Yeah, and I think that's really clear in the writing that it's coming from that really high vibration from that space because, you know, when you see a message on Facebook or Instagram and it's an inspirational message and often I'll scroll, to, scroll through and think, oh, that's really nice. But when I read your messages, I'm like, Oh yeah. Yeah. That means something. It's like, there's that deeper resonance behind it. It's not even just the words, it's the energy behind it. And you can really feel that. 
And I encourage anybody, if you haven't discovered your Facebook page, to go on and just read through some of the messages because they're just so beautiful. And yeah, I think there's that's the difference between when you just allow it to come through you. And I have that experience. Often I'll be, you know, having a shower and information will start coming and I'll have to like jump out and start writing stuff. Down. <laughs> it's not always convenient. <laughs> no, no. But generally it's when you're relaxed or when you're doing something like driving where you're just kind of switched off and yeah, you're not, your mind isn't too active. But, that's right. Yeah. And I always think it's funny if I try to change a word. Mm. <laughs> Because yeah. there are just some words that can't be changed. There are things that need to be said the way that they're said. So. Yeah, yeah. And I love that experience of just allowing that to come through. And sometimes I'll sit down and write and then read back over it. And it's like I'm reading it for the first time. And it's yes. like so new because it's just come through and I've written. And then when I read back, it's like, oh, okay, this is the meaning behind it. Yeah. And recently I've experienced that with um, Facebook memories. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> because there are things that I've written, obviously, years and years ago that are just starting to come forward as, as memories. And I sit there and I read them for the first mm. time. And I wonder, you know, what space I was in when I actually wrote them. Yeah. Uh, it, um, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. And, and I, I certainly am incredibly grateful for that particular gift that, mm. you know, that, that um, you know, that I've been given to allow it to come through. And I find sometimes that those memories that come up or things that pop up, sometimes I'll be on my phone and I'll see something that I wrote like a year ago, but it'll be something I need to hear right now. Okay. And I love that, that the answer always comes often before the question is asked. Mm -hmm. And it may be that I already have that answer and it might be sitting in my phone that I've forgotten about it. And then I'll see it and I'll be like, okay, that's what I need to do. Yeah, it's a wonderful thing. It's magic. Mm. So you were talking about the Pelua healing and how it was something you were being drawn to. You just felt that pull and it was coming up three times. And we were talking a little bit earlier about, you know, what it is and how it differs from Reiki. So can you just explain a bit about that? Certainly. So um, it's, a, it's source energy or, or what some would call light energy, the light, light frequency energy. Um, so it's, it's pure energy and we don't use anything to enhance it. We don't need to use anything to enhance it. It was channeled uh, by Kachina to, and she was given the instruction that the reason for it being channeled was to awaken the consciousness of humanity. Um, so it's a consciousness-based energy as opposed to Pelawa, which has more to do with um, the ener energetics of the physical body, yeah, as well as working with the emotional body. It's, ha it's hands-off. It's done on a hands-off basis. Um, and the practitioner, the Pelawa energy does not flow through the pat pat practitioner. So, whereas Reiki, the energy flows through the practitioner. With Pelawa, the um, practitioner is attuned so that they are capable of calling in the energy and holding the sacred space for the energy to do the work that it's there to do. And um, in that regard, you would say that the practitioner is directed by the energy rather than directing the energy. Okay. So very different to Reiki in that regard, because as, as any of us who work with Reiki, we direct the energy in terms of the fact that, you know, where our placement is, what, what direction uh, we place our hands in or what intention we have in regards to the way that we practice mm -hmm. Reiki. So uh, Pelwa is not, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not an intention-based um, energy modality. And in fact, it's not a modality where the practitioner actually receives any information about the client. The shift that occurs is direct with the client. Okay. So what does an average session look like? Um, obviously, do you stand with your hands over them or is it completely just sitting with the person in the energy? <clears throat> there is no average session. Okay. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> um, and every session is different. So um, the way that Pelua works, Pelua interacts 
it, it, what happens with the energy is directly associated with the client. So the practitioner is directed by the energy to move in whatever way the energy needs it to flow with, um, with it. So the practitioner actually flows with the energy um, in order to achieve the consciousness shift for the client. So every single time as a practitioner when you do it, it's different. And every single time when you receive it as a client, it's different because it will be down to whatever you need at that particular juncture. Um, so as a practitioner, yes, you, you are hands off, you, your arms will be moving. Sometimes your body is moving. Sometimes you spend a lot of time in one place. Sometimes you're moving all around the space as a client receiving it. Um, you would be lying there with your eyes closed. There is no music. There's no essential oils. There's no candles. There's no crystals. Um, none of the usual things that you would have in um, a treatment session and with Pelawa we only call in the Pelawa energy we don't call in any other energies to facilitate it as I said it's it's pure energy it's source energy it's light frequency it doesn't require anything else for it to do its job and the the best way for it to for it to do its job is for it to just be that clean pure energy and that direct transmission to the client itself so because it's such a high frequency energy, um, are there any requirements for clients? Do they have to already be attuned to Reiki or do they have to have any specific requirements to have it? No, absolutely not. And, and for somebody to actually attune as a practitioner, they don't have to have any specific requirements either. It's a really simple yet powerful energy. Um, and, you know, we, we're all energy beings, so we don't need anything to make us energy beings and we don't need anything for us to be able to feel the energy or receive the energy. Um, you know, for the most part, it just requires us to be open to receiving our willingness to receive. So no specific requirements. Um, there are some, some things that need to take place prior to somebody being attuned to as a practitioner and post, so 24 hours prior and 24 hours post, there's no um, other modalities to be used, um, no meditation, no yoga, nothing that opens up the auric field, nothing that, that causes any resonance to the auric field because um, Pelora is so high frequency, we need for it to be channeled in a way that is clean and pure. And the recommendation is that once somebody receives as a client um, a Pelawa session, that for the following 24 hours they don't engage in any other um, energy modalities either, just so that that, because the energy continues to work through for a 24 to 48 hour period. And that just means that the energy is condensed and not dissipated by other things. Okay. So what happened after you were attuned? You were on a certain life path and then suddenly things started to change? I was on a certain life, life path and I, I, I would say I was a little resistant to stepping into running circles and doing workshops and, and um, even though I knew that, that that was where I, you know, was kind of meandering towards, um, I was quite resistant to doing that, a bit resistant to stepping out, a re bit resistant to being seen. I was nice and safe just working as a practitioner um, and that all changed it all changed when I was attuned to level one and level two hello one and I got very clear about what I was here to do what message I was here to bring forward who I needed to work with and how I needed uh, to work um, my my intuition heightened um, my capacity to receive messages and and even my ability to channel, which was not something that I had really consciously done before. I mean, although I channel messages in terms of the poetry and the writing, um, in, in, in terms of with clients or with others, my ability in that area really, were really expanded. So that was when I attuned to level one and two. And then earlier this year, when I attuned to the teacher training level um things shifted again i had originally i was originally just coming to the uk for six weeks and before i even got here i knew i was going to be here longer so uh, things started to shift quite dramatically and i realized that part of my path with Pelawa 
is actually to bring it here to the UK and to to and to a much bigger audience and not necessarily just the UK but to wherever it needs to go and it's it's a an energy that I just love 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 working with it's it is beautiful it is joyous um, to do the two-day uh, attunement workshop with people is just magical because I see such shifts and such changes in people in, in such a short period of time and I see them go out into to the world and actually do what it is that they're here to do and that is just amazing, amazing to be part of. Yeah, it's so brilliant. And I want to talk in a minute about how people can go to your workshops. Um, but what you mentioned about how you were, you know, doing your healings, you were, you were a practitioner and you were kind of still hiding a little bit, a little bit afraid to go out there. I just love what you said because you were talking about how suddenly it was like the fear wasn't as much or it was still there, but you were able to just step forward um, to do things in spite of the fear is that right that is that is very true and and it's an odd mix I mean I don't know if you felt that yourself but it's a really odd mix to to be able to acknowledge that the fear is there and just go okay the fear is there but this is what I'm meant to be doing this is what I'm here for and it's time now to do this yeah no yeah. more excuses. I've been playing with that a little bit because I find there might be days where I'm stepping into that victim mode and letting the fear take over. And then the next day I'm stepping into my power and I'm like just on fire. And it's really interesting to watch how some days, and I notice like there's little triggers like tiredness will like just trigger me into like that victim mode or, you know, different things. And as I watch it, when I do step over to that like powerful side of me, the truths of who I am, it's like, yeah, this is who I am. I'm not that victim. I'm not that person who's afraid. And I don't need to be that person. And it's lovely to, I suppose, watch myself and watch how, uh, observe how that is progressing. So yeah, it's a work in progress still. Um, <laughs> you know what? That's one of the things that I love about the, the, the um, in, in a way, the complexity, but also the simplicity of the fact that we are, human and we are this these eternal beings and when we see that play out when we step into the power we step into that divinity within us and when we have those days where where we are fearful and we kind of go into victim mode or we go into sloth mode or whatever it is um you know that's the humanity of us and and isn't that a beautiful thing that we can experience both of those in a very short space of time Mm. Yeah, I'm really finding that that side of embracing all aspects and not trying to hide from it, not trying to push it away, just welcoming everything. And if there's suffering or if there's pain, just embracing it rather than trying to run a million miles from it like <laughs> I may have previously. Um, so yeah, that's also something that I'm getting better at. There's times where certain emotions come up I may have mastered one not mastered but being able to accept it and then another emotion will come up I'm like oh no I'm not going to go there <laughs> so oh, yes I, I understand <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think though even that little willingness to go and even look at it is sometimes all that's needed and yeah. the universe often responds and they're like okay you know we're not going to send you down that path because you've shown that little bit of willingness and we're going to take you in another direction. Um, and, you know, I think that's an important point, um, Sandra, is that, you know, if we, just, we, if we just take a little step in the direction, then the universe will meet us. Yeah, we, we just have to be willing to take that little step. And, and if, if the last 12 months have taught me anything, that's the thing, that's the biggest thing that it's taught me, is that just take the little step. When, when the call comes, take that little step and just then see what opens up afterwards. Mm. every time you leap the net appears isn't that mm -hmm. right um so you're in wales at the moment and you're teaching workshops you're initiating people into this pelua energy mm -hmm. and what have you got coming up how do people attend if they want to um okay so learn? i'm i'm really flexible with the workshops i can travel anywhere in the uk 
for, for the workshops. And if people are interested in attuning to Pelawa, then all they need to do is reach out and contact me and I can arrange to be in their area. Or if they're willing to travel to Wales, then they can certainly attend one of the workshops in Wales. Brilliant. Mm. And I know that a lot of people listening to this are from Ireland and from Dublin. And I was mentioning to you maybe about doing something over here. And I'd love to. <laughs> yeah, um, getting a workshop or getting a few people together. So I'm going to put that out there. And people, if they want to contact me, um, they can email me if they're interested in finding out more about this. And we can maybe set a date um, for something to happen. But yeah, that would be great. I absolutely love Ireland. <laughs> <my favorite> places. <laughs> Brilliant. So no excuse not to come now. <laughs> <laughs> so what's next for you? You are staying in the UK for the next few months and I'm staying in the UK for however long I'm here. I've decided not to put a um, time a time restriction on it. Um, I'll know where I need to go when I need to know that. So um, that's the way that I'm flowing with that at the moment. Um, I have a couple of projects that I'm working on and um, I'll now publicly state this, so I'll be held accountable for it, but I'm working on a book. Um, it's, it's been a long time coming and I've certainly had lots of pushes and nudges in that direction. So I'm finally heeding that call and going to sit down and, and do that. So that's an exciting thing. Uh, for me to be working with um, and um, I don't know whatever projects come come forward I am sure that there's you know other reasons for being here and you know to make connections and and to um, you know co-create with others I think that's the, that's a way forward for all of us and I think it's important for us to to work together and share the gifts that we have because we come from it from, from different um, backgrounds and we bring to the table lots of different uh, ideas and, and, you know, and we, we reach different audiences because of that. So I'm looking forward to a lot of co-facilitation co and co-creation in mm. the future. Yeah, mm. I absolutely agree. And that's one of the reasons why I started this podcast because I was just getting that indication that it's like we need to work together and support each other and be that supportive family for each other so that other people and more people can be reached and it's just I I suppose like you I was probably in my own little bubble um, on my computer and doing one-to-one -one healings and that was lovely it was great but I just get kept getting these pushes to reach out to people and just to start you know collaborating and doing more stuff with others and it's our combined energy that brings more power to what we're doing. So that's fantastic. And I can't wait to hear more about your book when it <laughs> comes out because I'd say it'd be amazing. Um, so yeah, I just love the freedom of where you're at, the openness of just seeing what comes up and just going with the flow. And I think that that's something we all need to learn to do a bit more of to just be open to where the universe is guiding us because often we have these you know, plans or these goals and it's very kind of like, okay, I'm gonna do this and this. And often we're restricting ourselves because the universe might have something else planned and we're not open to it because we're very focused on one thing or something else. So yeah, it seems that you're very much in that state of flow at the moment. I'm in that state, but I'm not gonna to say to you that there aren't challenges. <laughs> Or there aren't scary moments. Mm. <laughs> uh, you know, that the humanness of us always, um, you know, shows itself at some point and, and the patterns uh, that, uh, you know, have been endemic in us for a long time, you know, through lineages and lineages, um, you know, still come forward on occasion. So it's, it's still a work in progress to, to continue to, to stay in that flow um, and to just deal with the things as they come up, to really recognise them, embrace them, and deal with them as they come up. All part of the fun of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Julie, I'm so happy to have had this chat with you today, and I just know people are going to want to experience Pelua healing, and I can't wait to hopefully 
do your course and to experience it for myself. And um, yeah, it's been so lovely. Um, is there anything else you want to add before we finish? No, I'm excited too, Sandra, and I look forward to coming to Dublin. I know I'll be there, so mm. I look forward to that. I look forward well, to embracing you in person. Exactly, and I do too, and it's been such a pleasure, and uh, I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you.